Welcome to Happy Talks with Dr. Alice and Donovan. Dr. Alice Fong is a holistic, naturopathic doctor and founder of Amorta Swa Wellness. And Donovan Jensen is a software engineer and founder of HowToHappy.com. Together, they're out to cause more happiness in the world. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Happy Talks. My name is Dr. Alice, and this is Donovan. And today we have a special guest, Mark Wilkinson. He has come quite the life journey from an international house music DJ and record producer. And he's played music in over 65 countries across the world. And now he's a multiple business owner, coach, motivational speaker, and author of the book Life Remix. So I'm excited to introduce to you all, Mark Wilkinson. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you, Dr. Ellis, and thank you, Donovan. I'm really pleased to be here. Great. Yes. Well, yeah, we would love to hear a little about your story and your journey and what was your path to getting to where you are now as a multiple business owner and inspirational, motivational speaker and author. It's been, it's been quite the journey. Uh, it's been quite the journey. I mean, uh, I started out just loving music from when I was a kid. You know, I like I liked playing football. You might call it soccer. And I liked music and I was rubbish at football. So I did. I decided to get into music and, and somehow I managed to carve out this career. I mean, it was just, it, you know, it wasn't planned. It was just passion and energy mm -hmm. and enthusiasm and a love, a desire. Music just gave me that feeling, that kind of like goosebumps and that, like, oh, what is this? The first time I heard Elvis and the Beatles on my mum's stereo, I was like, what? It was like six. Mm -hmm. And um, I just got into it and I just carried on all the way through. I got into soul music. I was a big soul boy in the 80s here in the UK, listening to a lot of American bands, actually, like Fat Man Band Cameo. Luther Vandross, Alexander O'Neill, all these like huge soul artists. I got completely into it. And, and, uh, and then slowly but surely, other things started to come into my life. You know, um, first sips of alcohol when I was like 14. And then things just kind of carried on from there. And I got addicted to a lot of things that you would call pleasurable. Um, mm -hmm. And they were. It was, I got addicted to pleasure. And, and I managed to carve out this career that mm -hmm. had me traveling all over the globe eventually. Um, to all of these countries, playing music, you know, making music during the week in my recording studio. I mean, just living this music dream, putting on parties with all my friends and just doing that week in, week out for like, I mean, I probably made that last about 15 years or more, to be honest. And, uh, you know, I think eventually, uh, you know, the, the lifestyle definitely had an impact, I'm sure of that. Uh, but also, it was interesting as well because I found myself under quite a, an immense amount of stress mm. uh, because of various different things that went on uh, throughout my sort of uh, early life, if you like, on, up to about 30 and 30, early, uh, my early 30s. Um, and then one day I, I collapsed. I, uh, my leg gave way beneath me. I hit the floor. Um, my brother was there, thankfully. He helped me back up off the floor. And um, he said to me, what happened? I was like, I don't know. And, and, my body slowly over the next 18 months completely uh, froze up, basically. It was, it was wow. But consequently, on, or, or whatever the word is, on the opposite of that, um, my body also felt like it was on fire. So, you know, you couldn't touch me because I felt like, you know, I was li literally couldn't shake hands with anybody. I had swelling and, you know, it was really ho horrible time. It was really, really strange. But at the same time, when I sat down or when I laid down at night or anything like that, I froze in a position and I couldn't to just, just to try and get out of it was, was a real challenge. And that was for about 18 months of undiagnosed pain. So, so that, that was like, you know, that's like the, the story. That's where life remix basically came from because I had a choice at that moment. One was to just end this pain and just go and jump off the bridge. Or the other one was like, I've got to start learning and understanding a bit more. And thankfully I've got some good information at the right time. Wow. What, what an incredible journey and, you know, a really inspirational story for a lot of people trying to overcome struggles or, you know, you're, you, it sounds like you were dealt a challenging hand, like, or you were enjoying life, parting hard, rock star, star life. It sounds like traveling, enjoying mm. it. Um, but you know, it, it paid a toll on your body mm. and over time it gradually, um, something happened and maybe there's more to the story that you'll fill in the, in the blanks for, but yes, it, it had an impact on your body. And then you were dealing with this pain issue that really had you consider, you know, suicidal ideations kind of a thing or choose a different path. So I'm, I'm glad you chose a different path. Oh, <laughs> <So am> I. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, I think we all are. 
Um, but uh, I guess what tell us a little more about like what was that path and what did that look like and how did you get through that all all that? Well, yeah, I mean it, it's uh, like I said uh, before, it's kind of like um, it's it's a strange time for all of us in the world right now. There's a worldwide crisis going on. Mm -hmm. um, and I wrote, or I had the idea for Life Remixed about 10 or 12 years ago when I was starting to turn the corner from my own crisis. You know, in my 30s, I managed to manifest an incurable disease mm -hmm. uh, and then bankruptcy. You know, it wasn't my finest moments, right? Uh, but actually, uh, I, I thankfully didn't choose the, you know, the route to check out, but I actually dusted myself off and, go and went again. Mm -hmm. What was interesting to me was I was having a few issues before the collapse my body was giving me signals but I wasn't listening so I was getting quite a lot of stomach cramps and the doctor told me it was like IBS and he said to me you need to go to bed early and have green vegetables and drink water and I was like what are you talking about man I'm a DJ I mean I can't do anything like that and um so I wasn't ready to hear the information right yeah. then but then my body made me listen a few years later when I yeah. hit the deck I was like right okay you got my attention yeah. um and uh but but uh, a doctor told me that you've got an incurable disease, bad mm. luck. It's in your genes. Uh, you're always going to get it. You know, it's, some people get it much worse than others. You've had it really bad, you know. Mm -hmm. But about uh, around the same time, this is the way the universe kind of just happens, I think, if you, if you trust in it and understand what's going on a bit more. Around the same time, because I was getting some uh, colonic irrigations and all sorts of detoxes for my stomach, this the guy that at uh, this detox place gave me a dvd in 2006 like you know on a disc gave me a dvd and said um you need to watch this and it said the secret on it and i was like okay and i put it on and i watched it and i gave it back to him and said there you go he said no no he said you need to go and watch that 100 times mark and i was <laughs> like what what are you talking about i watched the film a hundred times in my life what are you talking about man um and uh but I, I, something about it he was confident and he was a good guy and and i said okay and i did go and watch it and i watched it i've clearly watched that film a hundred times and uh it's very very interesting when you start to get into the law of attraction the law of vibration the way things work mm -hmm. but the real bit the real bit that changed my life was when bob proctor said on the secret and when he said this ease is two words and you have to put a hyphen in there, that dis-ease. And he said, you cannot have a dis-ease in your body if you're at ease in your thoughts, your and your feelings. Mm. And I was like, well, hold on a second. Mm. The doctor's just told me I've got a disease and you're saying it's a dis-ease and I'm not at ease. I thought I was fine. You know, apart from obviously, you know, being not not having the greatest life that I, you know, basically I didn't, I never manifested enough money. You know, I wasn't always the happiest. I got the uplifting bit from DJing to a thousand people or two thousand people. That was my uplift. But there was so much other drama and things going on in my life that were just a mess. And I didn't understand why. I didn't understand that I was creating all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But that dis ease at ease, that was a light bulb. It was like right okay i need to understand more and the more i started to understand that was like 17 years ago mm. 16 years ago i've been studying myself and everyone else uh, psychologically and self-development wise for the last 16 years bob proctor also said around that time to me your way isn't working try mine <laughs> and i said yeah. yeah you're right because i am right now bank i was unhappy sick and broke i was bankrupt my body was failing i was like yeah it's not working i'm i'm gonna listen because mm -hmm. at the back of my mind i was thinking well if it doesn't work anyway then you can go back to how you work you know because you know and, yeah. and but guess what you know i'm happy healthy wealthy married it's all good and and <laughs> it, it all worked it all worked and all i've done with life remixed is i've gone this is how much fun it was this is how bad it got and these are, this is the way I fixed it. And it's not, I'm not some like, wow, genius. All I've done is gone got and learned a lot of stuff from intelligent people. I put it in life through mix with my own take and gone here because mm. it can help. It could help. Mm. Yeah, it sounds like there was a, that was like a critical moment getting that information and having access to it. I would be curious to know if you think that, because uh, it sounded like, you know, you had this DJ life and that was not balanced well with, with the rest of everything else, right? There was these nice benefits coming from that, some, some real big highlights, and then the rest was missing. Do you think, or maybe you have now, found some sort of uh, a better balance, or do you feel like those two things were at odds? 
Uh, I would say now, obviously, complete balance. Um, you know, multiple sources of income uh, is a big one for any entrepreneur. Do you know what? If I could go back, I and mean, this is not a regret or anything, but if I could go back and talk to my 20-year-old self, I'd have a little word for him. I'd say, listen, you want to be a DJ? Brilliant. Go for it. Make it happen. Live your dream. Do, do what makes you passionate and makes you happy. At the same time, build some assets, you know, find some other sources of income that back it up, that get it all going together, you know, make make yourself secure because that's all I'm doing now. In all honesty, I've, I've, I've bounced back from the bankruptcy from 12 years ago. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, multiple business owner. We've got properties. I'm a coach. I do, I do so many things throughout the day. I mean, people say to me, how'd you cope? I'm like, well, I stay up late. Uh, but, um, but the point is, is that, you know, I've got, a, I've got a really good balance now and I live my passion. I absolutely live my passion. I did, I did live my, live my passion as a DJ, but that might only be for a few hours a week. Whereas now actually, you and I, we're all, we're all awake 17 hours a day-ish. Uh, and I now live my passion for the whole 17 hours mm-hmm. a day, seven days a week. But I, I, that balance is so important. I was definitely out of balance when I was younger. And I was full, to be honest, I was full of anxiety, doubt, fear and worry uh, from an early age. And I explained some of that in the book. You know, I think my father suffered with undiagnosed PTSD from the mm-hmm. Second World War. He was 50 when I was born uh, in 1970. And I think we picked up so much vibration and fear and doubt and worry, you know, from our parents and from other people, society and everything else. And I just started self-medicating at 14 and, and I got all out of balance. I got all out of balance. And uh, don't get me wrong, there was some good times. Yeah, there mm-hmm. was some good times. Don't get, me, don't get me wrong about that. And I, I've paid homage to that in the book, of course. The first couple of chapters are you know, the first chapter is the collapse. The next couple of chapters are, here's all the fun. And mm-hmm. then, but then here's, here's how I put everything together and fixed it all. So, so here's the, here's the follow-up that I wanted to put onto that, which is, um, you know, for you, it kind of sounds like it took this big event, right? This collapse. Uh, and then it sounds like not just physical, but some other things in your life were also collapsing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you, and you've kind of, you know, alluded to this as we've been talking, but what would you say for, for, you know, listeners, what signs should they look out for besides their doctor telling them uh, to, to change up some of the habits? You know, what are some of the things to kind of think about and look for so that we can try to head off some of this and, and maybe get people before they're into full crisis? Well, the, yeah, you're right. And, and absolutely part of Life Remixed is if you follow these, these strategies that I've used to recover from a crisis, you won't have to go into the crisis in the first place because that's you know preferably i'd much rather that nobody ends up at the drama and the dramatic (laughs) place where i did right because there's a lot of pain there but the thing about it is is that pain does have a message Mm -hmm. which is very very important and you have to listen for it Uh, but one of the things i would say and i've said this quite a few times in interviews and stuff recently but it always seems to strike a chord with with people particularly people that are on this kind of journey and the you know the, the happy talks and everything that you're talking about um If you knew the power of a negative thought, you'd never have another one. Mm. And they come up, don't they? They come up for all of us. You know, they come up as a negative thought or there's a little emotion or there's a little bit of anxiety or a little wobble. It still happens for everybody. Mm. Um, You know, there's a great book, isn't there? Feel the fear and do it anyway. It's a bit of a classic. But Mm. the point I'm trying to make here is if you understood that if you allow negative thinking to to come into your life and then it goes in from your conscious thinking into your subconscious thinking, then it goes into your actions, then Mm. it will take you down. And that's what happened to me. You know, Mm -hmm. I can look back at it now and understand what happened to me and go, okay. And so I know the power of negative thinking. So Mm -hmm. I never allow them to stay for very long. You know, they might pop up and I go, okay, all right. Mm -hmm. How can I replace this? What else can I do? Let's have a positive, positive affirmation or let's have a positive chat with someone in the world or let's do something really that uplifts me and gets me going. Mm -hmm. Um, And then the fear goes away or, you know, that kind of stuff. And, And I think if the world really understood the power of, of, of negative thinking. You cannot have a happy, positive, happy, healthy, wealthy life if you allow too many negative thoughts to hang around. Yeah, I definitely really resonate with that. And it's such an important lesson for people to recognize that a thought is a thought. It doesn't mean it's the reality of the situation. And I think we, we get so tied into like, oh, I'm stupid or, oh, I'm not pretty. And then that just becomes our reality. And we go through life like that's the reality of the situation when it's just a thought and when we can separate and realize that it's just a thought it loses its power it's like yeah it's gonna and I, I really love that you made that distinction of understanding that every it's like you can't just stop the negative thoughts from coming <laughs> it's like human beings are gonna have these thoughts it's like there's no like 
um, firewall, <laughs> just like put up and just like stop the thoughts from happening. They're going to happen because we're human, but it's just like deciding in that moment, is this something that I want to have power over me? And, or do I just want to just recognize that the thought, just let it go. Well, we have a choice, don't we? Yeah, we always have a choice. We have a choice. We've been given the gift of choice. And the best thing we can do is make decisions, quick decisions, strong decisions that actually benefit us as human beings to be able to then bring that positivity to the world. If you can get, if you can literally get this little triumvirate, triumvirate, is that the word? Uh, from thoughts, feelings, actions. If you can get all of that in line, mm -hmm. you, can, you can literally create whatever you want to create in your lifetime. And that's, that's a beautiful thing to, to get, get mm. right. Yeah. So there was a, another piece from when you were talking earlier that I wanted to hone in on a little bit. Um, you mentioned that, you know, pain comes with messages or a message. And I don't know if that's a super common way of thinking, not, not, not an idea that everyone has been exposed to. So could we dig in on that idea a little bit more? Yeah, certainly. What would you like to know? <laughs> Basically, like maybe uh, if, if you could like color it out with some, some examples or just a little bit more detail or something like that. I just feel like, you know, it's something I'm familiar with because I'm in this content all the time, um, but I don't know if everyone is. So just some highlights or some, some other way to kind of think about that. Yeah, I, I, think, I think all physical and or mental pain, you know, mm -hmm. so we're, we're talking about um, there, we're talking about thoughts, you know, negative thinking perhaps coming in. Um, you know, if it, the, the body's a reflection of the mind ultimately. Um, so if you've got pain in your body, it's because there's things that are going on in your mind. If you've got a disease in your body, then you're not at ease in your mind. And most people like me back at the time, I was like, I'm fine, what are you talking about? But mm -hmm. I had to start learning and the, the pain has a message. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be listening and you have to investigate it. Mm -hmm. Too many of us have been trained over hundreds of years mm -hmm. to go to a doctor to fix us. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. I'm never negating doctors. Doctors are beautiful people. You'll be pleased to hear, Alice. But uh, doctors are beautiful people who help us. You know, modern medicine can help us incredibly quickly to get us back on our feet and get us moving. So 100%, you know, that's a, that's a positive thing, especially in an acute situation. But the really important bit is this, that we dig deep within ourselves and try and understand where this pain is coming from. I don't know if you've read Louise Hayes, You Can Heal Your Life. Uh, but the table at the back of that is incredible. She spent years and years and years studying um, people uh, and diseases. And there's a table at the back of You Can Heal Your Life where it's, she's careful, it's possible emotional reasons behind disease in the body. And I literally opened mine for, rheuma for rheumatism and rheumatoid arthritis, which is basically what I was suffering called ankylosing spondylitis. I read it and I read the possible emotional re reasons behind it. And it was 100% right. And I was like, my goodness, this is like, you know, again, it's just incredible information because mm -hmm. I was feeling those emotions. And as soon as I got rid of those negative emotions and got to a place of, of real love and joy and total acceptance and feeling great about myself and everyone else around me, that pain went away. Mm -hmm. And so it's a voyage of discovery, this stuff, right? You know, it's, mm -hmm. It's so important. It's so personal to every person. If there's someone out there who's hurting and suffering right now, they might not want to be, they might not be ready to hear me say, you're playing a role in this and you've got to, you've got to look at it more deeply and look at your emotions yeah. and look at your thoughts and understand this more. They might not be ready for that. Yeah. But there's lots of people that are ready for that. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of people that will listen and go, okay, I'm going to investigate this mm -hmm. to move further forward. Um, because I promise you, you know, every, every I, I, have, I have no pain in my life right now. Yeah, I have no pain in my life right now. I'm happy, healthy, wealthy with multiple businesses and a beautiful wife and everything's great. Mm -hmm. no, no longer stress. So my body's at ease. And so therefore, there's no more disease. And it's really important that this message goes further. Mm -hmm. Because it's definitely gone out there to hundreds of millions of people via The Secret via Bob Proctor, via, via Marcy Shimov, who both, by the way, have actually endorsed Life Remix, which in itself blows oh. my mind, um, is incredible. Um, but this, these messages have gone out there uh, to the world and they need to extend further. They can extend further because the more people that can be helped and understand that they play a role, and this is a beautiful quote, responsibility is the key to freedom. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Take full. I had to take full responsibility for my failures, mm -hmm. for my disease, for my bankruptcy, for everything. I took full responsibility. I understood the role that I played in it. And that allowed me to forgive myself and others to accept what was going on and then to start to feel grateful for everything that I still did have. Mm. Um, and that was, that was a, a real powerful kind of, it was almost like a, I don't know, just a cha complete change of direction, like changing the rudder and just going, you know, back the, back, going back the right way rather than heading down the wrong way, you know? Yeah. I, I, I definitely love, love that idea because, you know, there's so many people that, you know, so the world, especially with the whole crisis of 2020, there's so much pain and suffering right now. And one thing I remember hearing is that, you know, we're hundred percent responsible for our own happiness, but we're also hundred percent responsible for our own suffering. And it's mm -hmm. like suffering is optional. And it's just a matter of like what you were talking about with the pain of, of investigating it. Yeah. Not everyone's ready for that, but that's, that's the pathway to freedom. Cause like avoiding it, doesn't remove that pain and deal with it by numbing yourself with booze or drugs or food, but it, it's not going to free yourself until you do that explorative work. And it sounds like you've, you've done a lot of that over the years. And I, I'd be curious, like what, what some, uh, I mean, you've, you've mentioned a lot of resources, which I think is going to be helpful for our audience, but do you have any other um, tips or ideas on, you know, when the pain feels like too much for an individual where, or they're not like, you know, maybe they want to explore, but they don't know where to begin. Like, what does that look like? Like, what would you say to them? Well, what I would say is, mm -hmm. is that no matter how you're feeling, mm -hmm. no matter what pain you're in, there is a human being who has felt it previously mm. and has written a book about it. <laughs> 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 I 99.9% guarantee you that if you've got anxiety issues, someone else has had it and written a book about it, right? I guarantee you that if someone's, you know, recovered from cancer, then they've written a book about it, you mm -hmm. know? And, and so read, learn, study, you know? I mean, I heard it's a little bit harsh, but it's, it certainly got me. There's, I, I, sometimes I, I like the direct approach. Yeah. Um, and, uh, Someone uh, said to me once that uh, people that don't read have no advantage over people who can't read. Mm. And it's a bit harsh, but it's also, it's quite true, isn't it? Because if you, you know, I sailed through life for 20 years thinking I knew everything. Look at me, big ego, DJ, big, you know, yeah. aren't, I, aren't I special? Um, and then it took a bang, right, lay on the floor, mate, and, you know, start figuring some stuff out. It was really like, you know, it was, it was beautiful looking back at it. It was poetic. It was the right thing to happen to me. Otherwise, I probably just would have gone full throttle and, and then, you know, who knows, cancer, heart attack or anything like that, you know. So, you know, my rheumatic disease was nature's handbrake to say, stop, you know, have a look at what you're doing and see what's going on. Now, books, learning, you know, if you want to, you know, just seek out the best people, seek out the best people who are already living the way you would like to live and then copy them because they've written books about it. Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki, and then my mentor, Kevin Green, The Rituals here in the UK. Um, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. If you want to understand wealth, true wealth and money, you know, Louise Hay, you can heal your life. If you want to understand that you can heal and healing comes from the inside out, the secret. I mean, if you go to markwilkinsonofficial.com, all my recommended reading is there. And every single person, mm -hmm. I'm so grateful to them for actually making it happen and writing it in a book and actually then allowing me and the rest of the world to actually read this, read this stuff and go, there is another way. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not saying it's better or worse or up or down or left or right, because that's only I think it makes it so. But there is another way that perhaps doesn't make the adverts on the television, that perhaps doesn't make mainstream media. But ultimately, if you investigate these other parts of yourself, you can turn yourself into a happy, healthy, wealthy, successful person mm -hmm. of value, by the way, who, who can actually like add, add good energy to the world. Yeah. Yeah. That's an important lesson. I think was what I was hearing from that was that, you know, instead of looking within yourself, trying to figure out all the answers within yourself, 
utilize resources. There's a million resources that you can find. There's someone that's been through that situation. Go, go find that book on them or talk to someone who's been there or who's achieved the success that you want to achieve rather than just thinking like, oh, I don't know what to do. So I'll just do nothing. Kind well, what they will show you, what, what the, all, those, yeah. all these great teachers are basically singing from the same hymn sheet. But what yeah. they will tell you or what they will show you rather is that all the answers are actually within you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you have to then read to learn it to get it. I mean, you know, I, I, I came to a point, I mean, all the all the books, they said, learn to love yourself. And, and you know, and if you love yourself, then you love the world. And, this, and I was like, yeah, this is all very well. But, you know, and I find human beings, we find it much easier to understand something if we can articulate it. Mm-hmm. And I do this a lot in coaching. And, you know, I get into quite deep with people and I'm like, OK, so so what is love then? Mm-hmm. you know everyone says love yourself and then you'll love everyone else but no you know no one's defining it and saying well what is love then and mm-hmm. so i've come up with a definition of my own um which it might have come from buddhism or something i'm not even sure to me. i picked it up from somewhere but i've just got this thing about love that it is total acceptance mm-hmm. and when you can live you know, literally i can just totally accept this person here you know this 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 face this body this mind this you know that I never did for many years. In fact, I did self-medicate with alcohol and drugs and everything else and, you know, sex, drugs and house music. But the point was that I thought I was having a good time and, and there was some good times, but, but ultimately, you know, it was part of the recipe of my downfall. Um, but when I got into total acceptance of me, then I could totally accept you guys and then I could totally accept everybody. Um, you know, it's not perfect, you know, but I can still totally accept it for myself. And, that is a really peaceful place to live. Yeah, I really like that because I feel like it gives a, a more tangible, like you were saying, you know, you hear love yourself and it's like, okay, I do. I think maybe, what does that mean? <laughs> you know, so I feel like total acceptance is a, is a concept that is just a lot more tangible and easy to grasp onto. And something that for most people is probably easier to work on in the sense that you can easily gauge, you know, okay, here's this aspect of my life do I accept it? Here's this aspect of myself, of my thoughts, et cetera, et cetera. And then base it against, do I accept it instead of, do I love it? Because then I feel like a lot of people will try to really qualify love as like, well, love is this higher special thing. I don't know if I love my height. Uh, So I really like that slight reframe because I think it's a lot more uh, approachable and useful. And I, th- I thank you for saying that. And, uh, you know, I found that, yeah, if it was things, that, you know, listen, the whole thing about life remix, right? A remix is, you know, as a record producer, people would send me all the parts to the track and I would keep the parts that I liked mm-hmm. and I would discard the parts I didn't like. And then I would make the Mark Wilkinson remix by adding a few other bits into it, right? Mm-hmm. That's how I made a top 10 hit out of Lou Reed and David Bowie's Satellite of Love here in the UK. Mm-hmm. The point is, is that I've done the same thing with Mark. I've gone, right, here's the bits that are good and the bits that you know are, are worth keeping there's a few bits there that you know the negative thoughts and feelings and, and, and the few bits there that just need to see you later they need to go and then guess what i'm going to replace them with something else and so if i couldn't accept something about myself then i could make the decision to say well i don't accept that and if i can control myself in a better way with better thoughts better feelings better actions then I'll find my life much more accepting and find myself to be a much more totally accepting kind of guy. And, and like I said, if you can articulate something, human beings, we can either articulate it or visualize it. And if you can do one of those two things, you can create really, really, you know, a great life. Hmm. So going on with that, I, I had a question come to my mind and let's say that hypothetically, I'm, I'm looking to remix my life, right? I'm looking at some of the pieces and I see the pieces that are that I do want and the ones that I don't. And I pull out these pieces I don't want. And then I've got this space. Uh, I, I, I've got a question around like, what, what do you think is the best way to approach kind of that piece if you find that you're removing these negative parts, but uh, you find a lot of just space for other things? It's a great question. Um, nature abhors a vacuum. So if you make a space for something, something else will replace it quite naturally. Um, there's, there's, there's a few things. I was on an interview this morning uh, with a guy 
um, who was basically telling me that, uh, not telling me, we were, we were enjoying a really lively conversation. And he was going, well, the secret, you know, it's all like, you know, it doesn't really make any sense because some, some woman came up to him at a seminar and said, I'm going to get this Ferrari. I'm just thinking about it and it's going to come to me. And he was like, well, it's not, that's not going to happen. You know what I mean? you got to, you know, you got to do more, you know. And I said, there's two things about the secret that, you know, they, they're kind of left out, you know, which is number one is, is that um, uh, force negates. So if you're trying to force something uh, all the time, mm. uh, it makes it negative. You think about anything that someone else has tried to force you to do. It just, it makes it very, very negative. Mm -hmm. um, and the other part to it is you have to take massive action. So you can, you can ask, believe, receive, mm -hmm. but you've got to take some big action in there as well. So you mm -hmm. take some big action, you do something great, you might write a book, right? But you might do, but you take some big action and then you don't force it. Mm -hmm. I've got no idea what's going to happen with this book, mm -hmm. none whatsoever. I do know that Bob Proctor's mailing uh, my short story out to a million people in about 10 days time. <laughs> exciting but i've got thank you but i've got no idea what's going to happen it's okay you know mm -hmm. i've just gone here yeah uh, you know i totally accept what I hope, I hope you like it i hope it's good i hope it resonates i hope people enjoy it mm -hmm. um i expect it will help a lot of people but i'm not forcing anything yeah. yeah i think that's that's a really helpful extra piece and and the secret i, I kind of have the same i try not to badger the guests <laughs> but the secret is, is kind of one of these resources to me that I have like uh, two, two types of feelings about, right? Where I'm like, there's some really useful stuff in there. Also, you really need to make sure that people know that they have to take action. <laughs> and yeah. Because you know, I've run into the, the same type of people who see the secret, don't take any action, mm. and then are confused because they're like, well, I just, I don't know. I was trying to manifest. It's not working the for me. It's not working for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, hello. <laughs> so I'm really glad you added that bit in. And, and the thing that's uh, really uh, gratifying to me is that everyone that we have talked to or that I've talked to in general that has accomplished a lot of things using the secret as a baseline also touts the benefits of hard work. So it's really nice to see, you know, the full picture where... I think, I think the secret was really good entry level stuff. It was really good entry level stuff in 2006 to understand a bit more. We all know about the law of gravity. It says if I drop this pen, it's going to hit the desk, right? Okay, we all know about that. But none of us know from school about any other universal laws, like none, right? And so we go out into the world. We're trained to, you know, get up in the morning, remember as much as we possibly can, take a few exams, go to school, and then go get a job. And then just, you know, job, by the way, stands for just over broke, which is one of what my... Uh, what one of my mentors says, Kevin Green's a great one. Um, but the point is, is we're trained this way. Mm -hmm. And it, for me, it took these huge crises in my life that made me think about maybe just finishing and just saying, oh, I'm going to get out of it. Mm -hmm. It took these huge crises in my life to actually dig deep and try and understand what's going on. And, and I think so many people might just go, you know, blissfully through life thinking oh it's just up down it's fate it happens to me you know this kind of stuff is it's, it's a little bit of a cop-out because you know you are the creator you are the creator you create whether you whether you understand it or not you're creating every minute of the day every thought is a thing and you create stuff so wouldn't it be great if we decided made the decision had a choice wouldn't it be great if we decided that we would only create really really good things in the world imagine if we imagine if everyone did that yeah, what an incredible world we would live in. Great, wouldn't it? Come on, everyone. <laughs> yes, let's do it. <laughs> I actually haven't, I haven't seen this movie, but you're the second guest to <laughs> reference The Secret. So now I feel like I have to. It's but on I, Netflix. It's on yeah, Netflix. It's on Netflix. It. Okay, now it's, I'm going to add that to my watch list. But yes. um, but yeah, I mean, I agree with the, the sentiment. It's like nothing happens without action. But I can, I think maybe what the movie that I never seen, but maybe are trying to get at is like, like the belief do, do create the actions. It's like, if I believe I'm a successful millionaire, um, yeah, if I just think the belief, it's not going to happen without any actions. But if I think I'm like, oh, I'm always going to be poor, I'm always going to be a failure, then it's not going to propel me to do the actions required to become a millionaire. But if I, I believe it's going to happen, I just have to keep to keep taking the actions and keep failing and trying and and doing whatever it takes but not being attached to the outcome but keep the trying 
the yeah, outcome, then, the outcome. I was coaching yeah. a client. I was coaching a client the other day, and he mm-hmm. said, "Right, I'm going to make all these plans, yeah. and then I'm going to do some stuff, and then I'm going to believe it." Mm-hmm. And I said, <laughs> "I'll believe it." Mm-hmm. I said, "I said, hold on. I think you might have got that the wrong way around." <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, but many people fall into this trap. You know, my yeah. mum, bless her, my my lovely mum. You know, seeing is believing. That was her thing. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll you know, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. Right. You know. And, and I grew up with that. I was like, well, you know, if it turns up in my life, then I'll, you know, I might believe that. I might believe it is possible. Mm-hmm. And, and it's, com- it's completely the wrong way around, Bessa. You know, it, you know, you have to believe first. If right. you believe in yourself, you know, no one's going to believe in me as a coach or an author mm-hmm. unless I believe in me. OK. And so, you know, like total acceptance, you know, total belief, if you want to call it that. But, mm-hmm. you know, just complete belief, confidence, not ego, not ego, aren't I brilliant? just really like you know confident calm Mm. you asked me for tips little tips for people calm down speed up beauty (laughs) absolute beauty calm yourself down be in total acceptance believe in yourself feel good about yourself and Mm. watch your life skyrocket Mm -hmm. yeah just to add on to that that the the way that i kind of like to uh, think about confidence and things like that because for a long time I was thinking you know how am I supposed to go into all these different situations and feel confident because I haven't done a lot of this stuff or I don't know what's going to happen or whatever else so the way that I'd like to frame it and I don't don't know if this will be of use uh, but basically I look at it as the confidence in myself that I will be able to navigate whatever situations come up whether or not the outcome is going to be perfect whether or not you know I'm going to be the best whatever else but I feel you know very confident that going into pretty much any situation, I'll be able to figure it out. Um, that's that's the piece that has worked for me. Um, and I just wanted to highlight that because if it helps anyone else flip a switch, great. It's, it's really good. I mean, I would say that nothing of note was ever um, achieved inside a comfort zone. Mm-hmm. So you have to get comfortable being uncomfortable. And so it's difficult to be confident and uncomfortable <laughs> at the same time. And yet, I think one of the things I learned, I mean, most millionaires, multi, well, millionaires and multimillionaires have been bankrupt in their 30s. Mm. So mm. I can tick that box. <laughs> but the thing, <laughs> the thing with it is, is what actually happens is it takes away the fear. One of the things I say about money and career change is mm. one, change your relationship with money in the first place, because understand you're, the ch- you're in charge and the money's the tool. Mm. And the other thing is lose the fear of losing it all. Mm. Because I faced that. Mm-hmm. And it was all right. So, you know, if you lose that fear of losing it all, then all of a sudden you can be free. Yeah. And when you can be free, then you're not, you're no longer worrying. You're no longer in doubt, fear, anxiety, and, and you know, in all, all kinds of like, you know, negativity. And it's, it, you know, I'm not suggesting that everyone should go and try it because that's not what we're trying to do here. But at the same time, it was a very freeing experience for me. And guess what? You don't have to do that. Just follow the strategies that I've put out and you'll be, and, and you, you'll never find yourself in that situation. Yeah, like anything worth having in life is going to require discomfort and risking something <laughs> for yourself. I mean, you don't have to risk going bankrupt. <laughs> yeah, there's others. There's there's risk inherently in any type of success or growth. But there's also a risk of doing nothing, isn't it? If you do nothing, <laughs> it's also a risk, isn't it? Sitting yeah. around doing nothing, you're still making a choice, and it might end up you're sitting on your rocking chair going, oh, "I wish I'd done that a bit different." <laughs> <laughs> Like that's how I felt about the stocks when everything was tanking because of the pandemic. I was like, my stock had gone super down to like 30 and now it's almost 300. And I'm like, God damn it. I should have bought more at that time. (laughs) But that's the thing in the crisis, there's always, there's always crisis in, you know, Napoleon Hill says in Think and Grow Rich, every seven to 10 years, there is a guaranteed crisis in humanity. We had one with the credit crunch. We're having one now. There'll be another one in seven to 10 years time, guaranteed of some kind. Um, And our job is to insure ourselves against it. And that's where multiple sources of income comes in. Because if if one goes down, you know, I mean, you you only lose money if you sell, right? So if you hold on to it, then, you know, it should come back up. sell it, though. (laughs) Yeah. but I just wish I bought more <laughs> but I didn't but uh yeah that's okay <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's all a learning you know it's all learning, all learning. All yeah. learning. Yeah. absolutely great well Mark um I we really appreciate having you on our show is there anything you would like well obviously we're plugging your book today 
Life yes. Remix. Uh, it sounds awesome. <laughs> I love the title, Life Remix. Is there anything else you want to share with our audience before we wrap up? Uh, I'd just like to say thank you for having me on here because it's been really great chatting with you both and uh, I love your energy uh, you know I love the title and I love what you're doing so please you know just keep keep going you know keep on keeping on um, as far as my own uh, perspective goes uh, I've got a YouTube channel I've got uh, Mark Wilkinson official.com website um, you know I'd love people to connect with me across social media if they're finding something of value um, Life Remix the book uh, is available on Amazon uh, where with fingers crossed, it will it will do something special and, and it will help a lot of people ultimately. That's the goal. Of course. Excellent. Yes, everyone go go to Amazon, find Life Remix. <laughs> it sounds amazing. Thank and uh, yes, thank you everyone for watching and thank you, Mark, for joining us today. Thank you. Both. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. You can check out more content at howtohappy.com. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you can stay up to date on the videos. We've also got a Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook that you can check out. Reflect, take action, and enjoy life. See you next time.